All right, I'm Alex, and I'm back opening the second column of packs in my first booster box of sorcery. I think this one will go faster than the first set because I'm going to skip over most of the cards that I've seen before. And here we go. Alright, so uh, Moon Clan Werewolf is, uh, let's see, Sacrifice Immortal, and it, um, you get to summon it from your hand. Uh, I think this is potentially interesting. I keep thinking about decks with sacrifice themes. Uh, obviously, if mortals die, uh, you can also get back zombies. And if you're playing a bunch of um, like all of the lands that make earth creatures, or earth soldiers, uh, those are one power mortals. So um, this card actually seems pretty playable. And um, yeah, I would, I would test it out in decks. Another copy of Undertow. Uh, they have this card. Uh, yeah. uh, camera's not as good as last time. Oh, well. uh, Call to War. Uh, search your spellbook for an exceptional mortal. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Shuffle your spellbook. Uh, yeah, I think that tutors are pretty strong, and as more cards are made, this card will just get better with time. Uh, I'm a fan of it. Uh, Wicked Witch, Spellcaster, other nearby minions have minus two power. Uh, this is the elite from this pack. I think that this card works particularly well uh, with fire magic, since it you know, makes things small so that they can be destroyed with magic, but in general this is just a, a powerful uh, debuff, and I guess it's hard to make it work in combat for your own guys since you're minus two and your own guys, so yeah, I think it really works best with fire magic. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Disenchant we've seen before, uh, Spectral Stalker, uh, I think we haven't covered this yet. I think that, like, stealth, uh, playing Void Walk is something I don't mind doing in aggressive decks because it can be summoned to a void and then can attack, move and attack into a site. So, you know, even an opponent who doesn't have any significant creatures, this is going to get to do something damaging before it perishes. Um, Aveline Dryads, it's a two mana for one power, and it creates one mana. Uh, I think this card is pretty good. Um, I think that, in general, Earth has a lot of ramp effects to generate more mana, and also has a good number of five, six, seven, and eight mana cost uh, creatures with pretty powerful effects. Um, you know, the downside of the Dryads is that they're very fragile, and, um, you know, in my perfect world, there are good ways to sacrifice them later to turn them into more cards. Um, I haven't built a ton of decks that use Dryads specifically to ramp with, uh, but I have experimented with them and been pretty happy. Um, it seems like uh, the Gen Con metagame is coming back, and there's a lot of people playing Earthquake, so I feel like you know, both Dryads and Cores and Philosopher's Stone are all kind of at risk from that. So it's something to keep in mind, but I think that if you spread out your vulnerable things that make mana, uh, they're still good. And you know, often if you summon something powerful, like you've already gotten some utility out of them. So I think I still want to play them. Um, and, you know, particularly either have good sacrifice outlets for them or uh, equipment that makes them more powerful later. Uh, Ogre Goons, three mana for three power. I, mean, I think it's a fine rate, but in general, this is the kind of card I want to metagame against. Uh, play things that are you know, too big for them to fight or that are spells that are good at killing them. Um, 
Ghost Mercenaries. Right, this is the one where you discard a Raven card. So I think this is uh, borderline unplayable. Um, as opposed to the Werewolves Mortality we've talked about. Uh, I'm just going to skip a bunch of cards that we've talked about. And end on a nice Gothic Tower. Part of the Air Tower cycle. All right, next pack. Okay. Um, House Arn Bannerman. Uh, this is an example of an exceptional mortal that it's worth tutoring for. Um, four power, uh, or four mana, two power, but uh, gives all your other nearby allies plus one power. Um, this can really add up. Earth is great at pumping out guys, particularly with border militia or just their sites that make foot soldiers. Um, I think that if you're trying to create a swarm, uh, this is a, a key piece of that. Um, along with uh, you know the shield bearers, which reduce damage to your your units. Mm -hmm. uh, see, see skills. Uh, upwelling, upwelling, targeting nearby site, returning each artifact and minion there to its owner's hand. Uh, this is a pretty useful tempo card. Uh, I think particularly if we see the um, the mixes, see a lot of play, and people are powering out expensive creatures that um, you know being able to like bounce them back to someone's hand can you know, isn't just a tempo play, but they might not be able to replay it for quite a while. Um, it's also theoretically good for things that are trapped or uh, using it on your own creatures to reset their genesis triggers. Um, so I think it's like a pretty versatile spell and I expect to see people use it in all kinds of different ways, both kind of combo-y and defensive. Um, Asklon Phoenix, five mana for four, four power, Airborne, which is kind of the standard formula. Um, I'm pretty disappointed by uh, this card's change from beta. Uh, it, it used to be that um, if you met a certain condition, it would uh, come back from the dead, which I thought was uh, super thematic for a phoenix and uh, justified a relatively high cost. Um, I think this is just okay. It, if it takes fire damage, uh, instead it gains plus one power for the turn. Uh, certainly if you have something like Firebolt, um, you can make it very big, um, which situationally could be a sweet thing to do. Um, and also, you know, there's a bunch of AoE fire spells that make it bigger. So, like, it's cool. Uh, it fits in with fire stuff. Um, you know, it has a default of four power, uh, which makes it somewhat hard to kill. And a lot of direct damage spells are fire, which it's resistant to. So it's, uh, I think it's like a pretty good card. And... Um, I can, you know, imagine playing it in a variety of metagames or it being the right card in a variety of decks. I think we've talked about a couple of these. Um, yeah, uh, nothing new in this pack, so just leave this on this drown, which, uh, I think it's a really, really solid removal spell. Um, okay. Uh, Iron Shackles, maybe Conjure to enemy, to target enemy minion, bearers disabled. I need to reread the text on disabled. I'm not sure if you're allowed to put down items as a basic action or while you're disabled, you can still perform basic actions. 
I think you must not be able to, and so you're just stuck in the shackles until something buries the shackles or destroys them. Um, Alright, uh, Bridge Troll. Whenever an enemy attacks Bridge Troll, they must spend all of their remaining mana uh, to give you on your next turn. Uh, you know, I think that generally opponents are going to be able to cast spells and sequence their turns so that they're not giving you a lot of mana. So, you know, four mana for a three power thing, you're, you're, you're already paying one above curve, and I'm not really sure how much mana you're likely to get out of it. Um, obviously, like, if you're ramping a little because of it, maybe you get to cast something powerful, so I don't think it's awful, um, but I probably want something that performs more consistently, and, you yeah, know, this kind of gives your opponent control over when it matters, right? It's not when it takes damage, it's when it, an enemy attacks it. So your opponent has a lot of control over when this is beneficial, so I think it's just not going to work out for you that often. Uh, Hounds of Andros. This is a 5 mana for 4 power, but it has Airborne, Burrowing, Submerge, Void Walk, uh, and makes enemies lose stealth. Um, you know, I guess if you're trying to find uh, treasures buried or sunken, uh, this card is also, you know, fantastic at it. And um, it's like, it's, it's airborne, so it has the, you know, one less power than its cost. Um, I think that, you know, because it survives things like giant floods, um, lots of removal spells, can't remove it, you know, like bury and drown, like it's fine because it has burrowing and submerge. Um, I actually like this card quite a bit. I think um, it's just so hardy. And with four power, it's big enough to live through a lot of the direct damage spells. And, um, you know, being burrowed or submerged can make it untargetable. Being in the void can make it untargetable. Um, so, you know, th this seems like a candidate for lots of interesting things, whether that's just, you know, using it as a beat stick or equipping it up or some kind of combo that isn't immediately obvious. Uh, as a rich caravan, uh, five mana for four power. Um, it has all elements and minion types. For the most part right now, having all minion types means it's vulnerable to lots of cards that remove different types of minions. And, you know, having all the elements doesn't seem particularly beneficial. So, to me, this card just looks like an overcosted four power creature. Uh, maybe there's going to be combo pieces that come out with it, but right now I just really don't like this card at all. Um, let's see. And then I think most of the rest of this pack are cards we've seen before. Um, so, I will stop on this. I don't know. Stuff on this desert, which uh, yeah, just nicked and uh, greatly diminished its um, you know, perfectness and value. But, um, so it goes. All right, uh, next pack, uh, Psionic Blast. Deal one damage to each minion here. They're disabled until your next turn. Uh, I think this is an interesting air magic spell. Um, you know, it mostly makes it so that um, if you're kind of a solo mage and you're in trouble, you can kind of protect yourself. Um... You know, I'd probably rather be moving around, and I'd probably rather play spells that, you know, have more long-term impact. Like, just like a temporary stun doesn't seem that exciting. Um, so I think, I think this card is mostly not what I want, and haven't, haven't built with it, and I haven't really seen other people building with it. 
but uh, by contrast, Poison Nova, um, you know, deal one damage to each other nearby minion. So, you know, nearby is a pretty big uh, blast range, and it's lethal, so it's going to kill them all. Uh, Poison Nova, I think, is a really strong removal effect, and um, just, like, clears the board out nicely. It's not that good if your opponent's not playing a lot of creatures, but, um, you know, I'm pretty sure it hits things in stealth, which is also, you know, interesting, valuable, nice. I'd probably just rather play a spell that did a lot of damage, but um, this this at least seems reasonable for removing things, and I think in limited is probably um, like a really high pick because um, you're not going to be able to like craft your deck to be all like high impact damage spells and. You're going to end up using them as removal, so having this as removal instead feels great. Um, your opponent also isn't always going to see it coming, and you kind of get to have all of your minions uh, run away uh, before firing it off. Uh, Black Obelisk. Uh, its sight has, at the start of your turn, lose two life and gain two mana this turn. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Um, two is a lot of life to lose, uh, but, you know, two is also a lot of mana to gain. Um, I think that, you know, if magic is any indicator, um, paying life to accelerate mana is usually worth it. All right, on turn three, you cast this on turn four, you have six mana, and... There are a bunch of like very powerful things you can do with six mana, and um, you know the game mostly caps out at really broken effects at eight mana. So you know just getting to cast those much earlier is uh, quite nice. Also, it's it's lose two life, so if it sets you to death's door, uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't kill you at death's door. Uh, not that you want to get to Death's Door because of this thing, but, um, you know, I think that if you have uh, reasonable sources of life gain in particular, like um, you're playing the air vampires that, you know, have like four lifelink, or you're playing the, you know, one mana to gain seven life in Earth, uh, I think that you can, like, off offset quite a bit of life loss and... Um, I would be surprised if this card doesn't largely um, kind of get lumped in as the same group as the Alchemy 9 in terms of just like busted starts. Um, and it's, it's elite, so you get to play two copies if you want, which is pretty interesting. Uh, oh, so I was just shifting through this pack, see if there are any other cards that we hadn't talked about yet, and we've got this really beautiful uh, foil avatar of air. Um, I yeah, I just I love the foiling on these sorcery cards. It's like visually stunning in a way that um, I've never really found magic cards to be. Um, so uh, that's cool. Uh, I like the way the butterflies and birds pop out of this. Um, Avatar of Air, I think, is unfortunately one of the less playable avatars. So um, yeah, I imagine where this is going to be very appealing to a collector. Uh, I think much less likely to be, you know, high value because players are playing it and want it for their decks. But, uh, mm, nice looking card. Um, yeah, I think we've seen the, the rest of these cards. So we'll move on to the next pack. Alright, 
Kaven. So Kaven is just a like site-wide berry. And in general, I like these site-wide cards more than a uh, single target. I think that um, because of the way that defense works, uh, players often want to have more than one unit in a space. And, um, you know, because minions are often carrying artifacts, uh, if an artifact isn't in a position where you get to take it because their minion got buried, you know, I think getting to bury their artifact is really nice. Um, I think that, um, you know, Earthquake is, is better yet than Cave-In, but, you know, you can only play so many Earthquakes. So, um, I think that I like Cave-In quite a bit. Um, Mountain Pass. This is, um, I think it's very possible to construct a very controlling site deck. Uh, that can make it extraordinarily difficult for someone else to use their minions to damage your sites. Um, you know, Great Great Wall is part of that. Um, Gnome Burrow is part of that. Um, Bottomless Pit is part of that. And, you know, Mountain Pass is part of that, right? Minions can't enter the site on the ground if there's already a minion on top. And so... You, know, you can have an apprentice wizard, um, you know, standing on the mountain pass and none shall pass. Um, so I really, I like, I like this card, um, and it definitely goes in my air decks. And I think air is somewhat oriented towards control uh, because of all of its card draw and tutoring. Uh, cool. So lucky charm is one of the cards that lets you control chaos. This is, uh, you know, Bear's controller has whenever you do something at random, you may do it uh, an extra time and choose one of the outcomes. So, um, you know, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Storm, um, those uh, fire mercenaries where you discard a random card from your hand, etc. Um, I think that in general, I'm not sure that, that any of those cards are good enough that, you know, you, you also want to play this, um, but I imagine that over time there will be more cards printed that have randomness in them and this will be part of critical mass of making that randomness work for you. Um, so, like, it's a thing I'm excited to build around once there are enough payoffs for having it. Um, Astral Alcazar, this is the, the rare card, it's an elite. Units can move between this site and any void as if they were adjacent. So, um... You know, it creates like high void mobility. Um, there aren't that many units that can move in the void, so it has some limited use. Um, but like if you're trying to employ some kind of like hit and run tactics or, um, you know, kind of like threaten a bunch of your opponent's spaces, it seems like it has some potential. Uh, Amazon Warriors is a card that I really love. Um, five mana for five power. There just aren't a lot of things that have more than four power. And so on some level, these are bigger uh, than almost every creature that people play. And the fact that they can beat them in single combat um, just gives them a lot of versatility. And um, because Earth is good at ramping, even though they cost five, that's you know, not as prohibitive as it might be in a different um, element. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of these card, this card, and um, 
I've built a lot of mid-range decks where you know, I play a, a full play set of these. Um, some cards that we're familiar with. You know, uh, we have both uh, Extinguish, which um, banishes fire minions and auras, and Boil, which uh, destroys water minions and auras. And yeah, I think, as I've said before, I think these are too specific and without sideboarding have limited utility. Um, Uh, ooh, another foil. This one's not as spicy as the Avatar of Air, but this is a foil recall. Um, yeah, like I said, yeah, almost never a card I'd play, but um, I can appreciate the bling. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of these are all cards we've seen. So I'll move on to the next pack. All right, um, Cornerstone. This uh, this card you may put play this site in one of your corners, so it allows you to assemble some non-contiguous. Um, sites and um, I'll say in the um, you know prior version you didn't have to play it in your corner you could play it in any corner and this was uh, kind of like an essential part of aggressive strategies getting to you know threaten your opponent's space more quickly um, I think it probably was a little too good, both at generating threat and tempo, and also uh, kind of locking someone in and blocking spaces they could play sights on. Um, yeah, I think it offers some utility of if you've lost access to one of your corners, you can still play Cornerstone to have access to it. Um, I think it, you know, is synergistic with Wayfaring Pilgrim. Uh, but at this point, I think that the opportunity cost of playing this with no element on it is too high, and I have trouble imagining why I would want to play this as opposed to, you know, Crossroads or Imperial Road or, you know, kind of like other colorless things with upside or colored things Another mountain pass. Another floodplain. All right. Ooh, all right. Uh, this is also a super exciting open from my perspective. Uh, Pact with the Devil. It's a uh, three mana. Uh, you, you must either sacrifice the caster of the spell or half your life. And then if you do, you draw three cards. Um... This is a pretty cheap price for drawing three cards. Oh, it costs four now. Okay. Um, you know, like four mana to draw three cards is a very good rate. Um, the sacrifice or life loss isn't nothing. Um, but I think that if you are uh, running Standing Stones, it's a site that makes anyone on it a spellcaster. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to come up with a spellcaster that you can sacrifice. Uh, additionally, if you have Apprentice Wizards or uh, the Fire Witches that also sacrifice people, um, you know, you've got some great things to sacrifice. And um, it's just like, this card is also a reason to play red. And um, I think that getting to draw so many cards like relatively early in the game or for like a low price late in the game is uh, you know, kind of unmatched. And um, it was originally elite and they turned it into unique, which I think is totally reasonable because three cards is a lot. This is, uh, this is no ancestral recall, but 
It is uh, one of the best card draw effects in sorcery. So, super happy to have ripped that. Uh, then I have a bunch of cards that we've seen before. So, yeah, move on to the next pack. set of dual lands helps make all the dual color decks or multicolored decks work. Uh, Alright, the unique here is Doomsday Prophet. Nearby units take double damage except from strikes. So, um, you know, very synergistic with both fire decks and air decks. Um, and I guess there's a little bit of direct damage in water. And um, you know, if your opponent isn't playing those kinds of cards, this is uh, you know incredible upside. If they are, you have to be more strategic about how you play these. But um, because it says units, it also means other avatars. So you know, e even getting in one good lick with this is quite strong. Also, if you hide it with stealth, um, you could get a ton of utility. So. I think this is a very strong card in, you know, fire. Um, it might be, like, overkill a lot of the time. But, um, I don't know, I've also seen a lot of decks where players are playing, you know, vampires to gain life and, you know, gain seven life and bodyguards. So, um... You know, someone's going big on life gain. This might be the kind of thing that a fire deck needs to dig itself out from you know, an opponent with a huge life total who has some other plan that they're trying to enact. Um, all right. Uh, Coral Reef Kelpie. Three mana, three power, submerge. Um, I've mostly dismissed a lot of the, you know, three mana for three power. Uh, this one feels noteworthy just because it has Submerge, and uh, I feel like water decks are in the business of trying to submerge everything, or some water decks, and the fact that this lives through being submerged means that um, I think it's playable in those decks in a way that um, most three power for three mana might not be. Incinerate, five mana, deal four damage to every unit at a location. Uh, this can also be cast by allied dragons, not just spellcasters. Uh, I think this is a very strong card. Um, you know, once again, I think fire has great abilities to have creatures or sites which stack damage, so even though it's four, which is more than enough to kill almost everything people play, you can, you know, mash it together with, you know, Sight to get up to five or, you know, Kobolds or something to get up to six. So uh, it gets a lot of jobs done, and um, I just, I love this card, and it, you know, it's good at control, it's a powerful threat, um, it just kind of does everything, and I love it. Well, almost everything. Um... All right, and that's, that's the end of that pack. Yeah, almost everything was, you know, it, it, it takes some help to take out an Amazon warrior. Okay. So, uh, Dwarven Digging Team. Burrowing and all allied minions occupying nearby sites have burrowing. Um, two power, two mana. It feels like being able to make your characters burrow is probably good. Um, 
you know, they can appear on the map and not be targeted. Um, they can, you know, do underground shenanigans. Uh, that said, I'm just like, I'm never sure how exciting burrowing is. Like, I've never built a deck that I was like, mm, burrowing is the thing that I need. Um, so, maybe there's like, you know, something about secret passages and uh, other cards that are burrowing centric that will like one day make a sweet burrowing deck. But I think we're not there yet. And until then, this will kind of, you know, sit in the box waiting, waiting for the day there's a sweet deck to build around it. Uh, windmill, super exciting. Love a dual land. Uh, ghost ship is, so it's six mana for five power, has void walk, and whenever ghost ship enters a site from the void, you may summon a spirit from any cemetery to its location. Um, I imagine you have to pay for the spirit's cost. Uh, that said, this, um, getting to recur cards from your graveyard is a pretty powerful effect. And, you know, I'm, I'm willing to kind of pay for an expensive card in order to uh, get that effect. It also has five power, which makes it very hard to fight or kill. And the fact that it has void walk means that you can summon it to the void and, you know, often your opponent will be unable to target it with a spell to stop it from entering play and letting you summon a card from a graveyard. So I think this is um, a pretty strong card and you can probably build some kind of spirit-centric deck around it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a card that I would definitely explore in some metagames. Uh, just to note that uh, Grapple Shot, in addition to moving your character, puts a strike at the end, which uh, when I reread the card, I uh, realized that it had been massively upgraded since the beta, and I love this. Like, I love all cards that let a character move and get strikes in, and uh, this seems like a very powerful uh, version of that, so... Um... Grapple shot. I'm into it. Um, is there anything else that we haven't seen yet? The rest of these all look familiar, so move on. Right. Are, move these out of the box. Camera angle is better for next booster packs. All right. So working our way down the center column. Um, I don't think we've talked about this. So, Albert Spine Pikeman, uh, three power for three mana, but this one has strikes first while attacking, and um, I think that's pretty good. Like this basically makes it beat every other three power creature in combat and um, I would consider playing this. Uh, I also assume like if you did some damage ahead of time with a desert and you know it, it deals three damage and the other thing had four power that will like finish it off. So um, yeah it's, I think it just seems like one of the best three power three mana creatures. Um, ah, sweet. So we have a Death Speaker, is our uh, rare. And um, I think. So Death Speaker gets. Um, you may cast dead minions each turn. Um, you may cast one dead minion each turn. And for zero, if you're at death's door, and then whenever you do that, you banish it afterwards. So, um, like, 
it depends on how good the Genesis abilities of your deck are, which obviously is something you get to choose. Um, it sounds like the winning deck at Gen Con played, you know, the imps that deal two damage, the falconer that basically lets you summon a, a beetle that explodes when it dies. Um, you know, the princess that searches for an artifact. Apprentice Mage, Grandmaster Mage, um, Death Dealer. And, you know, those are all a bunch of, like, pretty strong effects. Um, but they also, like, cost a lot of mana. So the question is, like, you know, is... Do you, like, do... Are these the best things to be doing with your mana as the game goes on? Um, and certainly if you're playing in a high attrition game, you probably run out of things to do. And the answer is like, yeah, this is definitely the best thing to do. Um, and certainly it was, you know, the most popular avatar at Gen Con. Um, so, yeah, I think it's like, it's, it's quite good. Um... You know, is it better than the Sorcerer? Like, Sorcerer gets to draw cards for free rather than, like, having to, you know, pay three mana to bring in a, an Apprentice Mage. But it also uses its tap, so it stops it from developing sites. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty clear that, um, especially as they print more cards, like, Death Dealer will get better. Um, I think that, you know, there's... The, there, there are sites that reward, um, you know, Genesis abilities. Uh, so, um, you know, it was a strong card. Uh, of course, uh, Pillar of Zeros is extremely punishing. Um, but, like, happy to own it. I feel like having the strong avatar options for deck building is exactly where I want to be. Um, and then let's see if there's anything else in this pack we haven't seen before. Uh, I'm not sure if we've talked about uh, Belmont Longbowman. This is uh, three mana for three power, but with ranged. I think uh, like the pikemen, if you get to like deal your damage and not get damaged in turn, um, it's like a whole different kettle of fish. So. Uh, I think I also, like, I like these guys. Uh, you know, they still get killed by a minor explosion, but um, they're quite good at picking off a variety of airborne guys. And, um, you know, obviously if you have the poison dagger with them, they can kill anything. These guys don't get to, like, shoot and move, so I think I like them less than those other ranged units, but um, they're still a ranged unit. Put him on top of a hill, and your opponent, I think, has a pretty serious problem. Uh, I think this is my first copy of Deep Sea Mermaids. Three mana, one power. Uh, you know, submerge, and then um, when they enter play, Genesis, you can draw a card from the bottom of your deck. Um, your spell deck specifically. Uh, this has some like interesting synergies because the river cards let you put cards on the bottom, so you often know what it is that they could be drawing, and um, but they they do offer you kind of the opportunity to like put a good card on the bottom and then draw it when you want to, or you know cast them on the turn when you do that, so that you get that card and then you know a random card from the top of your deck. Um, Mm, yeah, I, th I think they're, like, fine. I think I almost always play them when I'm in a water deck. Because, uh, like, the body is useful for a variety of reasons. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think we've talked about Porcupine Pufferfish. One mana, lethal and submerge. Uh, this is very similar to the Viper in Fire, like, yeah, I think lethal is pretty good, and submerge lets you have, you know, control over when this thing is engaging with your opponent, and 
he kind of gets not quite a guarantee, but like pretty strong odds of having this interact profitably. And uh, yeah, that's the last new card in that pack, so I'll move on to the next one. Okay, uh, another Aqueduct. So moving along to the place that it is. Uh, Crave Golem. At the start of each player's turn, Crave Golem attacks a random minion within its range of motion, or takes a step toward the closest minion if it can't. Uh, four mana for three power. So, this card is kind of wild in that, um, you know, it's a lot of mana for only three power, and four. Uh, and you don't have total control over it. <laughs> um, you know, the main thing that makes this not terrible is that it's, you know, attacking on both your turn and your opponent's turn. So if there's like a lot of small minions around, it whittles them down. Um, I have a hard time seeing playing this card. Um, it just seems like if you're trying to get rid of minions, there are better ways of going about it, and having a minion that you control is, like, much better than one that you don't control. Uh, Evil Presence, you may summon spirits to affected sites, so when you summon a spirit here, give it charge and return the Evil Presence to its owner's hand. Um... I think getting to summon things into your opponent's territory uh, can be good. And the fact that this can kind of pick up and move anywhere is interesting. Um, and I think that where I don't like things that give, like paying one or two mana extra on a card itself to give it charge, uh, this is better because this is mana that's coming out another turn, so you can you know, play this on an early turn and then play a more powerful spirit later and have it charge, which um, could just represent you know, solid damage. So um, I like the way that this card is designed to give charge and um, you know, kind of like along with pirate ship, um, I can imagine there being some critical mass of spirits that uh, make a solid deck and probably as they print more spirits over time that deck getting better and better. Um, so let's see, I think we've talked about Sneak Thief before, but I'm excited to have a second copy. Um, yeah, I don't know if the rest of these are new, so. Onward, uh, three more packs in this column, so this is pack 24. Um, okay, so uh, this pack has a blaze, uh, blaze. I think uh, this turn you give an ally plus two movement and then it moves through some squares and then every square it was in it deals two damage to everything that was there. So I like this both because um, giving units movement is strong and um, kind of a customized set of sights getting two damage is also very strong. Um, my experience with this is uh, either you know by itself or combined with a desert or something is often a like one-sided board wipe, and um, I think that this is just a, an incredibly strong spell. Um, I think it used to do maybe three damage, and I think they nerfed it down to two, which I think was wise, but still seems real good to me. Uh, got another copy of Death Speaker, so hopefully can you know, trade that for 
you know, other avatars that uh, I would like to have. Uh, fade. Give an ally minion stealth. If it occupies an enemy site, draw a card. Uh, just two mana. So, uh, you know, like I said before, I think I really like cantrips, and uh, this is a solid cantrip. And when I have, you know, fantasies about ripping apart my opponent's hand with men of Leng, um, I think fade is part of that fantasy, right? Like, you know, it, it goes over, deals some damage, and then I fade it so that it's, you know, safe for another turn. Um, let's see, the rest of this pack looks like pretty familiar cards, so move on to the next, oh, maybe, I don't think I've talked about spin attack. <coughs> An ally strikes each enemy at its location. You know, in general, like I said, I like cards that generate strikes. Uh, spin attack is no different. Um, yeah, if you have a brawny earth avatar or battle mage, um, you can do a lot of damage. If you have, you know, minions with lethal, they can just wipe everything in the space. If you have a big minion, it will just also wipe everything in the space. So, <coughs> um, Um, what do you got going here? You got another windmill. Yes, uh, dual lands are good, so I keep calling them out even when I've played them before. There. All right, so Scorched Earth. Uh, choose any number of sites you control, destroy each of those sites and everything there. Uh, this card is, I think really great um you know destroying one of your own sites and paying a card is not a small price but um being able to like destroy things of any size that your opponent has put on your space um can really get in their head like you know as soon as people know you have this in your deck, they, they have to think about it and play around it, which I think can be challenging. Um, it also combos with things like... Um, you know, Yggdrasil, where if it's destroyed, uh, you know, everything gets destroyed. Um, so, you know, it can be kind of like a combo play. Um, and I think both, like, avatars like Pathfinder that rebuild faster probably like doing that. Or, um, you know, if you just have, you know, an Earth Mage with a bunch of bedrocks, they also come back with a, a better position after destroying everything. Um, you know, I think also with, um... Or cards like Riptide, you could conceivably, you know, pull, pull a bunch of things to the same space and then sacrifice it. So, um, yeah, I just think this is like a versatile card that has interesting implications. Um, okay, Grey Wolves. So... Um, two power, no, two mana, one power, uh, and you're allowed to play any number of them in your deck, and they have plus one for each other, Grey Wolf. Um, these, these used to have two power, and they kind of scale obnoxiously quickly, um, and, uh, you know, playtesters recommended nerfing them down to one power. Um, so they're not quite as obnoxious as they were once upon a time. But if a player is mostly using creatures and doesn't have many removal spells, 
giant pile of gray wolves is um, almost unbeatable. Uh, it can be kind of tricky to track someone down who is in um, you know, death's door. Um, so we, we often like splash this with air to get like cards like waypoint portal that would allow you to you know kind of teleport all your uh, gray wolves. Um, I think that the uh, mine car madness card might be a better, you know, in element way of moving all the wolves from one place to another. Though, obviously, if your opponent's playing water sites, uh, that's not the ticket. But um, you know, it, maybe it's like more gimmicky than good. But uh, it wasn't bad. There are a lot of decks that had trouble with a just a giant group of wolves. And um, I think that, yeah, I guess there used to be counter spells, and um, they play like counter spells to protect the wolves from some of the removal effects, like countering exceptional spells. I uh, got rid of a lot of the like cave-in style things that could get an entire pile of wolves. So they might not, eh, they might be not as good until you know the. Earth counter spells are reprinted if they ever are. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting secondary effect of not printing counter spells. It's probably the wolf deck is not as good. <laughs> um, all right, so five mana uh, power varies. This is the uh, Enui Undine. It has submerge and plus one power for each site in her body of water. Um, in my experience, if you're playing like a water deck, especially a water deck that's looking to flood the board, and especially with the um, great old one now existing, which floods every space on the board, including all the voids, um, it just seems like having a large body of water is not too hard. And, um, you know, if you're water focused, this is going to be five power for. Or four, four power for five mana if you have a few utility sites. And um, it just kind of scales up from there. Like if your opponent has water sites, they count. If you flood their sites, those count. Uh, so this just feels like it's going to be a big creature with huge upside and is also immune to being you know drowned because it has submerge. Likewise, you can summon it and keep it, you know, protected if you need to build up its size against someone who you, you know, think has, like, a meteor storm or something. So, uh, I think this card is incredibly good. Um, Autumn Unicorn. Uh, three mana, four power. Uh, it's exceptional now. I think it used to be Ordinary. Uh, so I, I like this rarity bump for it. Um, and I think maybe it used to only have like one earth symbol and now it has two. So I, I think that like the extra power they are respecting now, it used to feel like almost free. Um, I love this card. I think that if I can summon, you know, four power creatures for three mana, like all day, that would be like a huge chunk of my deck. I like that they dominate combat against almost everything that you know people play. Um, I like that even the you know I think very good five mana four power flyers like they fight um, successfully. Um, I think this is just like a workhorse of a card. <laughs> um, all right. Another copy of Scorched Earth is the rare from this pack. And let's see if there's anything else we haven't seen. Yes. So Wall of Ice, um, conjure top of the border with site you control. Use can't traverse, can't traverse Wall of Ice on the ground. Um, I think because flyers are so mobile, uh, walls aren't very good against them anyway. So I think this is probably the best of the walls because it's just um doesn't care about the size of the creature and it stops it from going forward and most of the like truly huge creatures are ground creatures anywhere so um 
you know, I think in a controlling strategy, Wall of Ice feels likely to be a big part of it, along with other sites that are hard to traverse. Uh, everything else here we've seen before, so, yeah. Um, that is the 13th pack of the second column, so uh, that was pack 26, and I think we'll stop there. If you enjoy this, you know, subscribe if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments, and uh, see you for the rest of this box sometime soon.